subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi everyone, welcome to Test Prep Training. In this video you will learn about the top interview questions for LPIC1 Certified Linux Administrator. So let's get started. Question number 1, How do you check a Linux server's uptime? Your answer is. You can use the uptime command to accomplish this. It can display you how long the Linux box has been running for. In addition, the W and top commands can be used to check the uptime. Question number 2, in Red Hat Linux, how can a user rename a file? Your answer is. To rename the file, you must first open the Red Hat Linux shell command line. You'll need to utilize the MV command there. The program will then navigate to both the original and freshly named files. Before renaming the files, double check the parameters. If you neglect to mention the parameters, though, the command will prompt you to do so. Question number 3, can you clarify what Red Hat Linux's goals are? Your answer is. Red Hat Enterprise Linux can be used to customize the operating environment by users who are familiar with Red Hat Linux. Furthermore, it aids in the completion of some basic command line chores as well as desktop productivity duties. Question number 4, can you describe what a Puppet server is and how it works? Your answer is, yes, it is correct. This is, in general, a business application that is ideal for configuration management. A Puppet server is a server that runs on a Unix-like operating system. To be more specific, this is an entirely open source and fully automated application. This allows you to send configurations to Puppet agents using codes. Puppet scripts can be used to perform vital activities such as updating user credentials, validating file permissions, and installing new software, among others. Question number 5, what command do I use to install RPM packages? Your answer is, you can use the yum and RPM command lines to install RPM packages on CentOS and Red Hat. Question number 6, briefly describe the storage cluster. Your answer is, when we talk about a cluster, we're talking about numerous computers working together to complete a task. High performance, load balancing, high availability, and storage are all examples of clusters. The storage cluster aids in delivering the best possible picture of the file system in the group's servers. It substantially enhances the server's ability to write and read to a shared file system at the same time. Furthermore, storage administration is made easier by effectively restricting the patching and program installation processes. Question number 7, what is the difference between Numisk and Ulimit, and how do I use them? Your answer is, in general, your limit is a built-in command in Linux that provides exceptional control over available resources when starting a process. Users can customize the limits.conference files to limit the range if they desire. Users can also change the syscall.conference file to update the system settings. Umisk, on the other hand, defines the usage file creation mask. When a user creates a directory or a file, Umisk assigns permissions to those directories and files. Question number 8, could you elaborate about SE Linux? Your answer is. SE Linux is a Linux application that provides additional security features. SE Linux protects the server from hacking and misconfiguration. This is used to gain access to the Linux kernel's control implementation. It sets a limit and then tells the servers that they can only access certain files and security policies. Question number 9, what is the web port used to serve web pages when installing Apache? Your answer is. Port 80 is used by the majority of web servers. As a result, when you install Apache, it defaults to port 80. Users can, however, use some alternate ports. However, they will be forced to type a port into a browser in order to access the website. Port 8080 can also be used for this. Question number 10, could you explain DAS to me? Your answer is. It's usually a block device that's physically attached to the host computer. It includes a file system. The gadget can only be accessed by specified servers. Storage devices, near dedicated resources, and server storage are examples. The DAS is a low-cost, simple-to-use device. It covers the technologies of SATA and SCSI. Question number 11, could you please tell me more about the load balancing cluster? Your answer is. The load balancing cluster, 
as its name implies, is used to distribute load evenly among cluster nodes. When the cluster sends the service request to a different cluster node, it works. Because numerous nodes can be designed to meet the load needs, this cluster enables low-cost scalability. If a node in this cluster fails, the cluster will notice the failure and assign the appropriate requests to other nodes. The node's collapse will not be seen from outside the cluster in this case. Question number 12. What exactly do you mean when you say LVM and LPI C1 Certified Linux Administrator? Your answer is. LVM stands for Logical Volume Manager in Red Hat Linux. It's a storage management solution that allows Red Hat Linux system administrators to divide a hard drive's capacity into PVs, physical volumes. PV is then divided into VGs, or volume groups. The VG is further broken down into LVs, or logical volumes. Question number 13. Can you explain the phrases SCID and SOID in LPIC1 Certified Linux Administrator? Your answer is. When a user runs a file, SOID provides the same degree of ownership permissions. When it comes to the SCID, it comes with a set of finished file privileges. While creating the directory, it inherits the ownerships. Question number 14. What kind of encryption software may users use to encrypt communication over the Internet in LPIC1 Certified Linux Administrator? Your answer is SSH a dependable remote desktop software that allows users to control the Red Hat server remotely, can be used. Certain commands can be used to control it. Furthermore, SSH encrypts the data effectively. Port 22 is used by this program. Question number 15. What is the difference between a SAN and a NAS? Your answer is. NAS runs a Red Hat Linux embedded OS on the fundamental hardware, such as the keyboard and display. Its primary goal is to validate clients and offer to share IP addresses with numerous systems or users on a network that requires a dedicated IP address to function. SAN, on the other hand, is an ideal block-level storage solution. It was created primarily to manage large amounts of data transfer. This is absolutely scalable in terms of performance and capacity. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.